So how are we to meet suffering? There's many, many different things we've seen in 1 Peter, but the most unusual one is we're to meet suffering with humility. We're to humbly submit to our elders. We're to humbly serve one another. Let's continue to do that. And the third aspect of that humility is we're to humbly surrender our anxieties to God. This is so practical and crucial for us when we face difficulties, which we all do. The command here is to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. And how do we do that? Casting all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Humble yourself. To be humbled means to be lowered. In uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4, it talks about the mountains being humbled, lowered. Uh, we got a postcard recently and had a picture of Mount St. Helens on it in Washington State. And I go, that mountain, it looks like the top's been cut off. Well, it had. It erupted and it got lowered. For us to be humble, it means we need to have a lower assessment of how important we are in this world. We need to be humble and willing to serve other people. And persecution, suffering, affliction, trials, difficulties, are things God uses that actually help humble us. And think about those that are like Pastor Daniel I mentioned last time, uh, who are under the strains of some persecution. Um, it's humbling to be ridiculed by other people. Somebody says, oh, so you're one of these, are you? That, that's kind of... You know, you're not really pleasing that person. You're not popular with that person. and You're a bit humbled. It's humbling not to be popular. It's humbling to miss out on a promotion that you wanted. It's humbling to be stripped of your property, your funds, as many Christians are today. In persecution. I think of one missionary I, I know told the story about his ministry in Africa in that outside the little home that he had there among the natives, he planted this nice pineapple garden. And the pineapples they came up and he was about ready to harvest them. And he went out one day to bring them all in and they were gone. Stolen. He was upset. So the next he goes and he plants some more and he puts a fence up. And harvest time comes and he goes out to, and they're all gone again. And he sees people running off with his pineapples. So he thinks, what am I to do? I'm going to get a watchdog, get a rifle. And God, the Holy Spirit, says, hey, you're here to minister to these people. You need to humble yourself. They, they don't understand properly. They think that whatever you have is to be shared. And you've come to share your life with them. And you need to humble yourself. And you need to be their servant. To share with them what Jesus is like. And he did that. And God used that to bring people to Jesus Christ. Wow. It's humbling to be Persecuted. It's humbling to flee your country, to cross a river from North Korea to China, to ask people for help. It's humbling to be imprisoned, like those voice of the martyr people we have seen. It's humbling to lose your beauty and your health. My mom in her situation in China, she lost her teeth because of the malnutrition in the camp. But she went back to England and I, oh, oh, oh. Well, that was humbling. 
It's humbling to see your church building that you've poured your sweat and tears into all of a sudden being burned down in northern India, Pakistan. It's humbling to be tortured, to be executed rather than exonerated. But when God is doing these things to help us be humbled, and when we are under difficult situations, we simply need to humble ourselves before God and place ourselves in his mighty hand. I think of Hagar and the way that Peter phrases this. And Hagar runs from her mistress and God tells her to return with Ishmael, her son, in verse 9, the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself to her authority, literally to her hand, to put herself back under Sarah's rule. What God is doing in a similar way in writing through Peter here, he's saying, in our difficulties, we need to put ourselves under, not Sarah's hand, but our Savior's hand. Put ourselves under God's mighty hand. Let Him take care of our situation. Jesus did that. Lord, not my will, but Thine be done. I commit myself to you. Gave his spirit out to God. We have a friend I've mentioned before with multiple sclerosis. She was the homecoming queen, the forest festival queen. and She came down with multiple sclerosis. She went to a healing crusade and went forward in her wheelchair and whatever help that she had at that time. She wasn't bound to a wheelchair then, but she stumbled forward. And there was prayer for her, and God did not seek to heal her at that time. But God has been her strength. His mighty hand and she's talked to women's groups about how God has helped her to be a prayer warrior, to be a loving wife and grandmother. That uh, through the storms of life, he has been faithful, helping her to cope, helping her to rejoice, helping her to have joy. Oh, God has been good to her. You look at her children and grandchildren, you go, wow, what a, what a blessing that God has poured out on her through a broken vessel, a hurt vessel, a yielded vessel. God says here that when we humble ourselves under his mighty hand, he will exalt us. He will give us gracious reward. At what time? Oh, at a time that is soon coming. At the proper time. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. When is that time? The time of salvation that's ready to be revealed in the last time. In verse 7. What time be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ? In verse 13, therefore prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. In chapter 4 and verse 13, to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing so that also the revelation of his glory you may rejoice with exaltation. We saw last week, chapter 5, verse 4. You younger, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown, reward of glory. We're going to share his glory. We're going to see when we get to chapter 
5, verse 10. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he will exalt you. Esther Kerr, Rush Toy, put it this way. Off time, the day seems long. Our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur, to despair. But Christ will soon appear, catch his bride away. All tears for oh, forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So, bravely run the race till we see Christ. In meeting our suffering with humility, we need to surrender. We need to surrender our anxieties to God. That's how we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God is we cast, as it says here in verse 7, casting all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. The word casting means to transfer. It's not what casting a lure into the water and then bringing it back. This is putting something away and letting go and moving on apart from it. It's, it's used this way in the Gospel of Luke. In chapter 19, we're on the triumphal entry. And in verse, let me get the right verse here. Luke 19.35 they brought the donkey, the colt, to Jesus. And they threw their coats on the colt and put Jesus on it. They took off their coats and they put them on the donkey and let go and let Jesus have their coats. We have anxieties. We all do. What are we to do with them? We are to put them on Jesus and let him ride away with them. That's what God wants us to do. Uh, this passage here is a quotation actually from Psalm chapter 55, verse 2. 22, Psalm 55, 22 talks a little bit more extensively of what it means that he cares for us. His department is caring for our anxieties. Our role is to give them to him and let go of them. Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Oh, I like that. God, God's care, His role in taking those things that we release to Him is then to sustain us and to support us when we build our life on Christ and the winds come and the rains come. We will not be shaken because our life is built on Christ his teachings and serving others on the rock. We will stand. He is our shelter. The time of storm. When mom was in London before going to China, she was in the bombings of Hitler's armies against London. And often she would have to hide in the shelters under the city. And... Uh, Sometimes they would come out of those shelters after the bombing was over and they'd see their apartment building leveled and gone. But they remained alive. 
we will go through difficulties in this life. Things that will give us anxiety. But as we give those things to God and leave them for Him to take care of, He will help us to carry on and to go forward. We may not be the same suffering. But we will not be destroyed. I like how Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed. We are perplexed but not despairing. We are persecuted but not forsaken. We are struck down but not de destroyed because we can give our anxieties to God who cares for us anxiety is undue concern in this context we all get anxious but what we do with the anxiety is what matters we can get anxious over wondering if we're going to have the right food or the right clothing or you know the right savings we worry about the future. Let me just say this here. If you're struggling with anxiety, uh, please give me a call and make an appointment. I'd love to help you with that. Work through that. We can be anxious about our death or the death of someone close to us. Matthew chapter 6 is the great teaching of Jesus on Things we can get anxious about. And in verse 34, 27, 627, who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? Yeah, that's worth thinking about. We need to give the length of our life to God. Let Him care about that. Doesn't mean we, we don't do our part, but we really leave the results to Him, the struggle to Him. Let's transfer every care to God. And when it comes to mine, transfer it again. And again, and again, into his department, into his safekeeping. Because he cares for us. He's the good shepherd. Oh, I like John 20, 10. John 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, he is the hired hand. And not a shepherd is one who is not the owner of the sheep. She, he sees a wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own. My own know me. Even as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. We have someone who is concerned about us. Who died for us. And if God so loved us, we can trust Him. He who did not spare His own Son, how will He not freely give us all things? He's going to take care of us. We will be cut down, but not destroyed. God's department is to do the caring. When we got to go on vacation a couple of years ago, someone offered to come and help us take our luggage and stuff to, excuse me, to the airport. So I was rolling out, you know, the suitcases and started to pick them up. He said, whoa, 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 no, 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 that's what I'm here for. I'll do the heavy lifting. I know your back situation. And 
He says, this, this is my job. Let me take care of this. Let's leave the heavy lifting to the one who's taken that job for us. Let's surrender our anxieties to the Lord. Peter, one day, he was out in the fishing boat, some boat, and the waves were rolling. The storm was coming. He's getting nervous. And then they see Jesus walking out. Peter gets out on the water. And then he looks at the waves. And he falters and he's anxious and he's, Lord, what does he do? Lord, save me. I'm perishing. He sticks his hand out there and Jesus does what? Takes his hand, pulls him back up. Let's cast out to Jesus. Let's take his hand. Let's let him guide us through life. Let's put things on his shoulders. Be anxious for nothing. But when we're anxious, in everything with thanksgiving, bring our supplications to God to get his peace, the passive understanding. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Let's surrender our anxieties to God. What I do, as when I know the anxieties are building up and I'm getting irritable and things, is I'll head up to the Olson's camp and I will just pour a heart out to the Lord, singing praises and confession of sin and offering petitions to the Lord. I'll be out on a hike and singing and praising. And I thought it was all about myself until I saw some hikers on that. Uh, lake Trail, Fumi Lake Trail, and oop, very careful. But you got the idea. We need to regularly give them to God and again and again. For Becky and I, July 6th is approaching. And for Sadie, July 6th is the date in which Becky and Sadie were seriously injured in an automobile accident and Matthew went to heaven. It's when an ambulance makes it sound this next, this next week that it just kind of is a little bit unnerving for me. And when I look at verse 7, There's a sense in there. There's a little alarm, a little pain, a little tear. Because just a few months before Matt went home, he and Sadie were singing this as a duet in church, this, these verses. Um, but you know, The verses that they put to memory and to song are exactly what we need to go through the storm. They sang the words that Kelly Willard put to this verse. These words. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. That is how to meet suffering with humility. Let's submit to our elders. Let's serve one another. And let's surrender our anxieties to God. Amen.